Okay, I'll make this video a lot shorter than what it was. I want to talk about these two radios here and the fact that this BTEC 6X2 has AES-256 encryption, which is compatible with most other manufacturers of DMR radios that support AES-256, such as this Motorola XPR-7550E here. Now, I will note that Motorola radios are hard to get in North America with AES-256, the reason being because Motorola wants to reserve AES-256 for government and stuff like that and sell them P25 radios that will also require a key loader, a KVL, to program. And those range anywhere from three to $5,000 for the KVL. And then you have to purchase the encryption algorithms you want flashed in the radio. Whereas with the Moto Turbo radios, you load the keys off of the programming software. So um, there are some security downfalls to that, that if the radio is recovered, the keys could be read out of it. Whereas with a P25, they're contained in a secure storage in the KVL and on the radio. But for regular users, it's not that big of an issue. Um, being, especially being that you can remotely kill these radios, just like the P25. I will say that you need to have a part 90 frequency or another licensed business frequency in order to do that. And um, these we use at work on a licensed itinerant frequency for DMR. You also have to make sure that the frequency is licensed for the mode you want to use like FM narrowband, DMR, NXDN, P25, what have you, or conventional or trunked or all that. This is used on a DMR conventional system. So you cannot use encryption on ham, and that's a whole other topic. But I will give a brief demonstration of how this sounds with AES-256 enabled and go over a little bit of how to set it up. Okay, this is the Motorola radio receiving and the VTEC 6X2 transmitting with AES-256 encryption on DMR. Okay, now I'm going to show this one. Set it there. This is the Motorola XPR-7550 transmitting and the VTX-6X2 receiving with AES-256 on DMR. Now, that is how that is done. So you can tell how it sounds. I honestly, firsthand, I think the Motorola sounds a little better, but that's just kind of my opinion. This is not a bad radio. I mean, for a Chinese radio, they're pretty decent. It's dual band, so I also use it on the hand bands. And the nice thing about that is I can have both uh, IDs in there. The ID for the work system and the ID, my actual DMR ham ID. And don't have to mix and match those. The Motorola's, you can only um, have one in there. And... So, if I want to use it on a ham, I have to change the ID back from the work ID. But both of these are my radios, and the license covers us to have 30 radios, and we have about 15 right now, so that lets me use mine on the work system as long as I keep it on the frequency that we are authorized to use. So... You could get an itinerant frequency, a part 90 frequency, but it's kind of expensive if you want to do it yourself. I mean, like one frequency or a frequency pair. If you get much more complicated than that, you have to have a frequency coordinator and a bunch of other stuff, and it gets way more expensive. And if you want a trucking system, or then it gets really expensive. So you're still looking at a several hundred dollars if, for a 10-year frequency just to run encryption, but if you're wanting this for like a survival scenario or something like that where you really don't care what frequency you use and like you need to 
talk to someone securely in a, an emergency situation, then, well, I can't tell you here or there how to do that, but there's, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> the one thing I will say is the keys that you load into these, the encryption keys, on the Motorola, um, the keys can be up to, up to 64 characters long, and it's hexadecimal, so it's A through F and 0 through 9. So if you get one of these, um, Motorola will fill, if you use a short key on this, like say you use 1, 2, 3, 4 as the key, Motorola will fill the remaining key space with zeros. It'll pad it with zeros. The BTEC does not. And the... Um, so if you put in the same key on the BTEC, you need to add, I believe it's trailing zeros, I may be wrong on that, after the key. So if you have one, two, three, four, then you need to add 60 zeros beyond that for it to be compatible with the Motorola. Or you can do what we've done and use a random number generator that's generating random hexadecimal and just set it to a 64-bit character length and use that randomly generated key as your encryption key and 64 digits long it's going to work so that's really just to show that the BTEX implementation of AES-256 meets the DMR industry standard which is what the newer Motorola's use and other than that I don't have anything else really to add to that so I hope you enjoyed and any more technical questions I might be able to answer, but um, there's some that I may not, but I will do my best. So that's, that's really it. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed.